Hey what's up guys, in this video I'll be installing assist on the XP4105, I'll also be installing assist on the WF2850 and the WF2830, so let's get into it. So I just recently finished setting up the XP4105 for sublimation and I'm wanting to add more ink capacity to the printer, so I'm going to be installing assist. I'll also be installing assist on the WF2830 and reinstalling assist on the WF2850. Now I've already set up the WF2850 with assist and I'll put a link in the description for that setup, but this is going to be an install where I run the tubes inside of the printer and that's going to allow me to close the scanner down and give me that cleaner overall look. Now the steps in all of these printers are exactly the same, so I'll be following these steps in triplicate. Again, being that I'm going to be running the tubes inside of the printer, it's going to require me to disassemble and burn a hole into the side panel. Now if this isn't your kind of thing and you just want to do a simple sys install, I suggest watching that sys installation video of the WF2850 that I mentioned earlier. So first and foremost, I need to make sure I have chipless firmware installed and I already have the ability to read chipless cartridges. If you don't have chipless firmware, head over to inkchip.net and you can purchase the firmware for your printer. And make sure to type in the coupon code GORILLA to save 10% off at checkout. Also in the description, I'll link to the chipless install videos for all the printer models that I'll be using today. So I'll be using the SIS kit from Dynamite Gorilla. I'm also going to need a cheap soldering iron, some heavy duty mounting tape, a razor knife or a utility knife, a black, blue, and a red marker, and as always, gloves to keep my hands clean. So in the accessory bag that comes with the Dynamite Gorilla Sys, you're going to get four tubing washers, four tubing elbows, a 10 mil syringe, a priming clip, a T-style tubing clip, and two clamp style tubing clips. But I'm only going to need one, so I'll put this one back in the bag. I'm going to have to modify the tubing clip so that it's shorter, so I'm going to grab this mountain tape that came with it, and then I'm going to peel it back. Now the clip's able to slide down into the bracket. I move it down so that it's flush with the bracket, then I'll replace the mounting tape. Now if your mounting tape isn't sticking, this is where that heavy duty mounting tape that we mentioned earlier comes in handy. Now using the bottom of the bracket as a straight edge, I'll run the utility knife across that part of the clip a couple of times. Then I'll snap it off and now I'm left with this shorter T-clip. And I'll put that back in the bag so that it's ready when I need it later. I'll take the sis and lay the tube out flat. I measure out 30 inches from the tank. I'll trace a cyan tube back and then mark it with a blue marker at 30 inches. And I'll do the same with the black tube, marking it with a black marker. Then I'll mark a line across the tubes approximately 3 inches below that. I'll make a cut in the middle of my 30 inch marks. And I'll separate the tubes down to that line that I drew across all of the tubes. I'll take the elbows from the accessory bag and place them on the tubes, marking each one as I go. Black for black. Blue for the cyan. Red for the magenta that's going to be right next to the cyan tube and yellow I'm going to leave clear and that's going to be the tube next to the black. Next I'll grab my cis cartridges and remove this retainer clip. Then I'll remove my tubing by pulling up at the elbows. Now sometimes the washers will come out and I'll just place them back onto the cartridges. And now I have a tank with the color coded elbows and a set of empty cis cartridges with no tubes. Now I'm ready to move on to the printer to get this installed. First I'm going to turn the printer off and unplug it. Then I lift up on the scanner unit and remove a total of two screws. The one here on the top corner in front of the kickstand and the one on the left hinge. I'll flip it up on its side to release the two tabs and lift up on the panel to separate it. Then I'll flip it right side up and finish removing the panel by lifting up and pulling back. I'll make a mark on the panel above the area where you would normally connect a USB cable. Then I'll take a hot soldering iron and melt a slot into the plastic. I'll unlock the carriage by pressing the carriage as far to the right as it'll go. 
Then I'll rotate this gear towards the front of the printer clockwise if you're looking at it from the outside of the printer like I am here. And once the lock moves down, I'm able to move the carriage to the left and to the right inside of the printer freely. I feed the tube through the slot in the panel one elbow at a time. And situate the tube so that the black tube is on the top as they go through the slot. I'll feed the rest of the slack through the panel and feed the tubes through this opening here. And then I'll snap the panel back onto the printer. I wipe down the left side with some isopropyl alcohol and install the bracket, lining the top of the bracket up with the cutout for the scanner. I'll then wipe down the plastic bracket toward the left side. This is where I'm going to install my clamp style clip. Then I'll install my shorty clip in the middle of the printer lined up with the sensor. And I'll feed the tube through the top of the diamond shaped hole in the carriage. And I'll move the carriage to the left hand side and then I'll pull all the slack through. Then I'll put the elbows into the cis cartridges. And before I forget, I'll replace the screws. Now I can fill and prime the tanks and cartridges. For the XP4105, I'll be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink. I'll start by filling the priming chamber with 25 mil of ink. And I'll turn the tanks forward for 30 seconds to move the air to the top of the tanks. And then I'll turn it right side up and continue filling the priming chamber with another 10 to 15 mil of ink. Then I'll put the rest of the ink inside the dosing chamber. Once the tank is filled, I'll go to my cartridges and remove the clear plugs, and I'll insert my syringe into the cartridge. I'll double check to make sure my vent holes are open and my ink shutoff valve is open. Then I'll pull up on the syringe until the ink fills the cartridge. I'll keep pulling up slowly until ink starts to flow into the syringe. I'll let about 5 to 10 mil of ink flow into the syringe. And then I'll empty it back into the tank. I'll replace the clear plugs and move the slack back through the carriage. And push the cartridges down into the print head. Good. I'll secure the tube into the clamp style clip and then I'll push that slack into the corner. Then I'll secure the tube into the shorty clip and make sure the carriage can move all the way to the right. Now I'll be using regular refill ink for the WF2850 and the 2830 so I'll get those set up. And then I'll plug the printers back in and turn them back on to make sure I don't get any error messages. And then I'll run three head cleaners followed up by three purge files and I'll do that until I get a good nozzle check. And once I got a good nozzle check, I'll do a couple of test prints just to make sure that nothing's going to pop up in an actual print versus just a nozzle check. And to test out the sublimation on the XP4105, I'll be working with a wallet blank. Now the blank is smooth so I'm going to create a leather texture in Photoshop and try to give it that look that I'm going for. Alright, so it looks like I'm able to print without any errors and everything seems to be in working order. Now I have that added ink capacity and I don't have to worry about removing the cartridges to refill them. And doing it this way is a cleaner install in my opinion and the cyst looks like it's actually supposed to be there. And as always, I'll put as much information as I can in the description. And until next time, guys, good luck.
and good night.